Hi, um, thanks for that. So, um, I'm students from UC Austin, and this is joint work with um, Professor Franco and Mr. Tao. And the title is Specification Reversing Mobility. And this is basically a study on how to use the vehicles to collect and harvest the ISD data distributed across the And we focused on the IoT network, and there are a few ways to enable large-scale connectivity of IoT devices. Um, first approach is to use base stations as infrastructure to connect IoT devices. Then IoT devices are directly connected to the base station. But if the IoT devices have short transmission range, this method is not possible. It's not the optimal. The second approach is to use IoT mesh relay with base stations. Now the IoT devices are both sources and relays to relay the data. But as the network size increases, there is a deception around the base station, which undermines the capacity. So in this paper, we, we name it as edge based approach, and we use IoT mesh relay with vehicular gateways to, to harvest the data. And this is an example of delay. And we have the following questions. First, how we can model the sh information shift from base stations to vehicles? And this requires us to understand the basic geometry, such as vehicles, base stations, and IoT devices. We use stochastic geometry to capture these geometric elements. And then, to, to identify the mesh filling on IoT, IoT nodes, and we use radius time tree to capture the mesh filling. And the second question is, how does the shift affect the network capacity? And we use the queuing query capacity, which is associated with the wireless link rate, to define, to define the capacity. And then we compare the capacity of link-based approach versus the edge-based approach, which is our approach. And this is outline of my talk. I will introduce a system model to find four topics, and then I will introduce the scaling, scaling of the network, which is the most important function in this paper, and I will go over the main claims and simulation, and I will conclude the talk with two A mesh plus cell architecture is an example of sync-based approach. The IoT devices are given by positive point process, which has the lambda S, and it's given by these blue squares on the left. And these IoT devices are sources and relays. And independent of IoT devices, there are base stations also modeled by positive point process, with density lambda b. In general, the density of IoT devices is much, much higher than the density of base stations. In this mesh plus cell architecture, the information flow is from IoT devices to the nearest range using more cell relay. So the cell is the plasm, which is characterized by plasm bonded cell, which is on the left is given by blue lines, are the, the boundaries of mesh filling. And the mesh plus vehicular architecture is an example of edge based approach. So similar to the mesh plus cellular, IoT devices are given by plasm process with density lambda s. And the road network with the road layouts are given by positive line process with density lambda l. And conditionally on the road, there is vehicle which is given by positive point process with which parameter is the v. And there is repose link which is also given by positive point process with parameter is the bar. These vehicles and repose rates are positive point process because they are positive point process conditionally on the positive line process. You might wonder what the repose rates do. So they are just IoT devices on the road. So the information flow in this architecture, as you can see in the figure, is from the IoT devices. They are sources and relays. So they use multi relay to go to the nearest, to, to, to relay the packet to the nearest repository. And then from the repository, Vehicle, 
we assume that the repose we transmit only when there is a vehicle in its cell. And the cell is given by this OS example. So the cell here is host from a cell. And this, this is the boundary of the mesh relay. And the relay is characterized as radius M3. And we consider the simplest and the most most simplest one, which is nearest and nearest boundary, where in cellular architecture, the IoT data is related to the nearest communications using nearest IoT devices. In vehicular architecture, the IoT data is related to the nearest repository using the nearest IoT devices. And this, uh, major, this relay is mathematically characterized as greater than three, and there is uh, some some results are known for the temporary case. And remember that for all the sources are all the nodes are both sources and real. And this figure illustrates two different tree structure in two different architecture. The left one is the mesh tree structure in mesh plus vehicular architecture, and the right one is the tree structure in mesh plus cellular architecture. The cell in the mesh plus cellular is of the cell, and it's given by these solid blue lines. And, and this, they are similar to the trapezoid. And on the right, that's in the mesh plus cellular, the cell is quasi grown on, and, the, and its shape is on the polygon. So the tree shape in the left, which is in the mesh plus vehicle, is a thin tree because both sources and the repositories are in the thin trapezoid, thin trapezoid. On the other hand, we uh, call the tree in the mesh plus cellular as a fat tree because they are in the fat uh, complex column. So using uh, the random geometry, we add a tree model to model congestions. Each node is modeled by two with multi-class arrival and multi-class departure. Multi-class because depending on the depending on the sources, the destination might be different, as you can see on the right. On the right. And this is multi-class service. This multi-class service time is tied to the channel rate that was described. And the refers to the vehicle is captured by the patient queue. So the refers to queue has a positive service rate when there is a vehicle and zero service rate if there is no vehicle, so it's on vacation. So the service rate when there is a vehicle is characterized by channel rate from repository. And for the Q service rate, we consider wireless link rate. So we consider the, the simplest one called the Packbox model, where the receive signal power is given by transmit power time distance to the distance to the minus gamma and minus then gamma here is password component. And this assumption is very critical to to have the result for, for, for the for our result. And we use channel rate which where the rate is given by log two of one plus signal divided by interference. And the package size are given by exponential with mean alpha. Using these ingredients the service rate from IoT node I to node J is given by this formula, where the signal sub J is the interference seen by the IoT node J, and delta sub IJ is the distance from node I to node J. In a similar way, service rate from repository R to its vehicle is given by this formula, and the signal sub B is interference seen by the B. And using um, the service rate, we have the, we have our performance metric. We have sensing capacity and harvesting capacity. The sensing capacity is defined by this formula, and this is just simply obtained from the stability condition of the telling network. So the based on the stability condition of IP node I, its maximum sensing rate type the I should be this formula, where the and so IJ denotes the number of IOTs. IOT nodes whose traffic is delayed from node I to node J. And at a 
rest of ij denotes the service tree from node i to node j. And the sensing capacity is looking at the looking at the minimum of the maximum sensing rate given by this equation of the tree. So it is defined by the minimum common rate that the tree can support. And we also have harvesting capacity. The harvesting capacity is for the typical base station, the typical vehicle is a spatial average of the maximum received packet per unit time. So the sensing capacity is defined for the tree, but the harvesting capacity is defined for the gateway. So we have two gateways in two different architectures. In cellular, the gateway is base station, but in vehicular, the gateways are and it meaning is as follows, the sensing capacity means the minimum common IoT rate. So if the, if the IoT node has a more rate than this value, then the tree will collapse, and that works in both. The harvesting capacity is the maximum received packet per, per unit time received at the gate rate. So it, it's related to the sensing capacity, and I will explain this. And here is the key assumption of this paper, and this is called scaling assumption. It's as follows. The mean number of bus trees and mean number of IoT devices are of the same order. And this is captured by this equation 5. And the left hand side is just the density of the bus tree, and the right hand side is just the density of IoT devices. So it means that they grow at the same rate. So I want to point out two aspects. First, we do not scale the number of vehicles. The density of vehicle is given by the product of years of B here and lambda sub L. So they do not scale. And second, the repositories are just IoT devices. So it's, it's similar to, it's exactly the same as the IoT devices in space. So there is no cost by any repository. Here is our main claim. The sensing capacity of typical repository tree in mesh plus vehicular architecture is at least of order this value. And the sensing capacity of typical base station tree in mesh plus cellular architecture is of, of order this value. The gamma here is a password component. So there, uh, you might want to compare this um, two sensing capacities in two different architectures. But in fact, this is not a metric to compare because uh, in the mesh plus vehicular, the gateways are the vehicles, not the repository. And finding sensing capacity is just like uh, finding out what is the most congested IoT devices. So there might be three different configurations that the IoT device might be congested. With the high appearance or the low signal power, or huge arrival. And um, basically, the two architectures have the same, almost the same tail distribution for the service time, which is alpha stable with alpha stable less available with parameter gamma divided by 2. But what differs here is the number of IoT devices per tree. In a thin tree, in mesh plus vehicular, there is both order zero lambda S node. On the other hand, mesh plus cellular, it has a order lambda as known. So by using the extreme value theorem, the bottleneck service time would be these red values, and from this value we find the difference between the sensing capacity. And here is the harvesting capacity. The harvesting capacity of typical vehicle in mesh plus vehicular architecture is for order lambda s to gamma of 4 plus and the harvesting capacity of typical base station in mesh plus cellular architecture is of order lambda s to the gamma over 2 plus 1 over 2. Then, uh, then we are ready to compare the capacity of two different architectures. So here is the key claim. A harvesting capacity gain of order lambda s to the gamma divided 4 exists when moving from the mesh plus cellular architecture the mesh plus vehicular architecture. So 
I'd like to press two things. First, it's true for um, the, when you when you consider the same density for the vehicles, the same density for the base vehicles. It means that this is this averaging capacity gain is this when the mean number of base vehicles, the mean number of vehicles are the same. And the second thing is this gain is on order scale. So if you have more and more number of IoT devices, then your harvesting capacity gain will increase. And this and uh, harvesting capacity is just basically spatial average of received packet of vehicles and base stations. So the gate race in mesh is mesh plus vehicle is vehicles, and mesh plus cellular is base stations. And the sensing rate is given by the sensing capacity of the tree, but the number of IoT devices per tree is given by order lambda s to zero for the mesh plus vehicle architecture under our scaling function. And in the mesh plus cellular, it's order lambda s. So the total, re total number of total received packet per unit time per tree is given by this value. But in fact, in mesh plus vehicle architecture, your vehicle travels or visited of order lambda s with post rate for unit time for any constant velocity. So the total received packet for time for gate range is given by this one. And we verify our analytic result with large scale system level simulation with, uh, by generating random objects and identifying the tree and tree structure on the, on the random object during the channel rate by, by looking at the appearance and derive the, deriving the sensing capacity and harvesting capacity using the phone. And this is the result. We just simulate the pass loss equal score. In the simulation results, the harvesting capacity of vehicles is for order lambda s to the zero, but the, the harvesting capacity of, of vehicles, base stations order lambda s to the minus 3 over 2. So the gain here is lambda s to the 3 over 2. And this match this matches with an analytical. And here's the summary. Uh, we propose an IoT architecture uh, leveraging vehicles. And this can be interpreted as an example of delay for the network with, with linearized motion but random, random orientation. And this can be applied to the delay frequency network by looking at this words as a floating gate. And there is a future work which includes the delay analysis and considering the homogeneous size of the And there are your